Access Analog is a very interesting service. It's basically analog in the cloud. And they have just released a new mastering chain. And they've given me first access to it, so let's take a look. All right, Access Analog, what they do is kind of genius. They uh, robotize analog equipment so that you could use it basically from anywhere in the world. You can see this on their website. You can see that over here. They have a few pieces here that, that have those robot motors on there. So the new mastering chain that they now made is the mastering chain from Pete Lyman. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And um, at, at this is Pete. And uh, this is his mastering chain. Some very cool stuff in there. Can't wait to check it out. A lot of very interesting music and artists have been mastered uh, on this chain. So it's really cool that they're sharing it uh, from multiple perspectives. But more on that a little bit later. So this is the uh, this is the chain. One of the things, uh, at least for now, is that the chain is in a fixed order uh, as far as i know pete uses the chain in this order so that's really cool and because they fixed this chain you don't have like additional adda steps or relays in between or whatever you've got the most pure signal path there are a few pieces in here that i do know and a few pieces in here that i do not know and that's already the first cool thing of such a plugin you can use such a plugin to discover analog equipment you can Try before you buy with something like this. Or not buy it at all. So we've got Infrasonic. This is, uh, I think, a custom box. <laughs> yeah, this is the mastering console. Yeah, we're going to check that out. We're just going to, again, turn some knobs and push some buttons and probably overdo it and from there uh, figure it out. Got Infrasonic transformers. Really nice in the front of the signal path. Interesting. And we've got a Bax EQ. Really cool to check out as well. Manly Massive Passive, of course. Huge fan of this EQ. It's it's a beautiful tube EQ. We've got the Maag. Maag? 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 In Holland we would say Maag. The Magnum K, uh, which is the compressor. I do have experience with the EQ from Maag, but not with the compressor. So again, it's going to be a discovery for me as well. We've got the Rupert Neve Masterbus processor. Uh, let me see. I think... I used this thing once in like some kind of a test scenario. I can vaguely remember it. So uh, interesting. The infrasonic treble limiter, whatever that is, and the master bus converter. All right, so I want to run some audio through this, but before I'm going to do that, I want to say that I'm not being sponsored by Access Analog to make this video. Um, they are just providing me with all of the tools, and one of the things that they're providing me with is um, a balance with enough credits to make this video. Uh, it looks a bit weird in the plugin right now, and that's because there was some kind of a bug. Um, it's not going to cost 810 credits per hour. Uh, but that's all that they did. No money is being exchanged, and uh, everything that I'm saying in this video is my complete, honest, and independent opinion and if you appreciate that make sure to check out my affiliate links at Toman and Sweetwater and buy your gear through there uh, I know that a plugin like this promotes not buying gear and renting it through the internet but again check it out over here and if you want to buy plugins uh, check out plugin boutique and um, you know using my affiliate links will kick back a little bit towards the studio and you help me in that way so you get your equipment and uh, you're supporting YT studio thanks a lot for doing that and let's run sandstorm through this thing all right out in out oh oh out is out oh okay okay You can hear the relays switching. And there's a 1200 millisecond uh, delay on it. Uh, that works the best for me. Um, probably because the signal has to travel pretty far. I think this rack that I'm controlling now is literally in the US. Um, I do have a fiber optic connection, so your mileage may vary. Um, but yeah, there is a slight delay between me changing settings and Reaper is doing something in the background so that it really feels like it's like, like there's no latency. Like playback functions immediately after pressing play. And then after a second, the plugin kicks in. I don't know how Reaper is doing that, but... I 
like that. Oké. Okay. Dus we got die backs EQ. Let's uh... Oh, we've got linking in here, which is really cool. So that's that's a benefit of using remote controlled analog. You don't have to use the two hands. They they link it for you. It's interesting, by the way, that they're linking this. There are plugins that are not linking left and right. They exist, like plugins. And this is controlling analog gear, and they've already implemented these these handy features in here. Let's do let's do quite a broad shell. Oh, you see, here's the problem. I'm trying gear in this way. I get tempted to buy it. It's very unhealthy, this. It's very unhealthy for my gear addiction syndrome. Wow! I mean, I knew Dangerous made good EQs in the back EQ that that was like a must have, but. Wow! smooth wow wow i mean find yourself a plugin that can do this tell me let me know in the comments down below well i'll move on to the manly massive passive and this one is an eq that uh, i've seen a lot in a lot of different mastering studios i've heard it a lot it's um yeah it's just a traditional tube eq but a lot better, <laughs> uh, a lot more uh, options and functionality. One of the things that's interesting about a massive passive is that it, it has a gain and the gain goes from zero to 20 and you decide with a switch if it's going to be boost or cut. So I think it just reverses or inverts the circuit with that. I, I don't know how that works. Uh, we've got a bell and a shelf. Let's, let's boost the lows through this thing. Cut something here. Maybe make a shelf here in the highs. It can go up to 27 kilohertz. And you might want to say like, hey, 27 kilohertz is too high, but 27 kilohertz is the EQ frequency, but there is a, a filter going towards there. So you are boosting lower frequencies as well. That's why it's on there. Here, listen, here, here. I mean, you can hear it. I don't know if the YouTube codec lets it pass through, but... Ah, 16, 16 for this, yeah. Maybe cut this, yeah. Yeah, nice. I mean, it's interesting also to um, to check out somebody else's uh, mastering chain. I mean, he can probably t uh, tell stories about it and that kind of stuff, but by really using it, you will understand it way better. And maybe in combination with a manual. Let me see if I can figure out this uh, this Mark thing. Mark has always been an interesting brand to me because it's a little bit more different from what I'm used to, both in sound and also in the way it's controlled. 
if if we look at the EQ, you can see that it has a few fixed bands, and then it has um, an air band that that you can adjust. So that is something I'm I'm not really used to. I'm, I'm really used to semi or full par parametric EQ. So that's that's what makes me think. Then anyway, let's activate the this thing. Magnum compressor and a parallel EQ. Ooh, whoa. Oh, so this is the EQ, air band and. Whoa! You don't want to mess with this compressor. Whoa! Whoa, okay. Airband. Yeah, give me something to air. Subtle. Yeah. Ah, oh, I mean, oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm getting it now. Yeah. It has a bit of a fingerspitzengefühl thing. Interesting. All right, the master bus processor, I've got it linked, active. Oh, RMS and peak compression. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, come on. So the latency makes it sometimes a bit, um, a bit weird to control. That's something you might want to get used to. One point Let's let's uh, crank it up. Let's see let's see what we can do with the with the texture. I can get so carried away with trying out new equipment like you can like literally lock me up in a studio with a new piece of equipment and I will only notice that the door is locked as soon as I get hungry or something. Like literally. And with this thing as well. I would love to check out the analog one of this. Or may maybe not. No, because then I want to keep it. I don't... I don't want to... I like gear, but wallet says no. All right, the treble limiter. I don't really need to use it on this track. Uh, I tried to use it and it, it barely triggers. Because there isn't a lot of, you know, annoying travel in there. So we're going to skip that. And uh, the Masterbus Converter, uh, it's really cool that they also digitize this. So you can really, you know, use the settings on here and uh, use, the, use the limiter, the built-in limiter in here. Really maximize your signal. So basically, you should be able to do almost anything in this plugin. So here are 
from my perspective, the benefits of using analog in the cloud compared to real analog equipment like I do. Um, I'm kind of an old fashioned type of person in that way. First of all, what is really cool about this, and I just tested this, is recall. So the plugin stores your settings and as soon as you open the plugin and connect again to the server, it recalls your equipment settings. With analog equipment, you either have to take photos or fill in recall sheets so that you can recall the equipment in the same settings. You know, it's pretty easy to make mistakes when recalling, definitely with uh, stepless potentiometers. Uh, most mastering gear have stepped pots for that exact reason and also because it makes matching left and right easier. Uh, but sometimes there are like stepless settings in your chain. It's really precise work to recall it and it takes time. And with the plugin like this, it's just like you open it and it's done. The next thing is that if you're using analog equipment only every once in a while in order to master your track or whatever, it's not really worth it to purchase it. You know, purchase costs are high. You have to do the maintenance on it. And if you do not have a studio equipped to run analog equipment, you also have to purchase ADDA converters, cables, patch base, and you have to learn to use a completely different workflow. While with a plugin like this, it's, you know, your usual plugin workflow and you're only using it and paying for it whenever you're needing it. I do think that I do need analog equipment uh, way too much to use a service like this because for me I would be using this like seven or eight hours on a given day. Uh, some days I wouldn't and some days I would really need to use it a lot and you know this is a service that other people are using as well. So planning is going to be difficult and it's also going to be kind of expensive then. So then you know Having real gear helps as well. But with a service and a plugin like this, you're really getting the benefits of digital plugins with the sound of analog gear. And as said, one of the use cases for such a plugin uh, would be testing of gear. If you're thinking of buying gear, you can test it out. And as you can see here, they do have a lot more equipment. And as far as I know, even more equipment coming. So you can test out a lot of different things. You can really figure out if the AMS Neve is something for you to use. And if, if it's cool to use, but only every once in a while, you don't have to buy it. You can use it for $7.83 for half an hour, which is like you have to put in a lot of hours to justify buying it then. Another use case for this is uh, stem processing, um, either with this chain or with the other equipment in there, or doing your final mastering through this. Uh, that could also be uh, really cool. And it also has an offline processor. So you can also, um, you know, make settings in here and then later on just putting it through the offline processor uh, instead of having to run it uh, online. Full mixing using this plugin or multitude of plugins, I don't think is there yet or is doable yet. Who knows what the future may bring? Maybe soon you can fill your whole DAW up with equipment from Access Analog and, you know, run a full analog mix. It would also be really cool if they would start using uh, tape equipment, but I can understand why they don't want to do that. So yeah, the Pete Lyman Mastering Chain is available right now. It will be linked in the description down below. I don't know yet what it will be priced at. The price is still a closely guarded secret. So uh, you'll see it. Uh, check out the link down below. Below. Now, if you like my videos and want to support me, consider becoming a member using the join button down below or the Patreon campaign over here. And as a member, you get early access to videos, exclusive content, and all the good stuff. I'll link something over here. For the other viewers that just want to watch more videos, which also supports the channel, I'll link an interesting video over here. Because you've watched this video all the way to the end, I'm giving you a 50% discount code for Access Analog. It's this one. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, keep pushing, and bye bye.